Hey there, welcome back. We are going to finish part one, which are the multiple choice questions, for our June 2022 Algebra 2 Regents examination. These are problems 17 through 24, and if you haven't already, give me a like, give me a follow, ring that bell, do what you got to do, but uh, show me a little bit of love, people. Now, let's begin with problem 17. Problem 17 is an inverse problem. The inverse of f of x equals negative 6x plus 1 half is. Okay, so we need to find the inverse of our equation that's given to us in the problem. Okay, the first thing I always tell kids to recognize is that this is really saying that y, okay, f of x is the same thing as y. So y equals negative 6x plus 1 half. All right, now after you recognize that f of an x and y are the same, there are two things you need to do to solve for an inverse. The first step requires no math whatsoever. I am quite literally, okay, I am going to literally change all my y's to x's and all my x's to y's. I'm just going to flip those letters, all right? So, I have x equals negative 6y plus 1 half. That is step one. No math has been done whatsoever. I should say no calculations. Now we're going to do some algebra. So step one, y's become x's and x's become y's. I flip them. Okay. In step two, I just solve for y again. And I'm going to use that doing my opposite math to peel away everything from the right side that is not a y. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract a half from both sides. And I'm going to continue this right up here. So I got x minus 1 half equals negative 6y. All right? Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. So I've got to divide this by negative 6. And I've got to divide everything on the left side by negative 6 as well. Okay? So right here I have x over negative 6, and really that's 1x over negative 6. So my equation is to start out with a negative 1 sixth x, okay? This is not right. This is definitely not right. The x is not in the denominator, okay? Okay, well, we have a possibility here and here. So it's, it's between 3 and 4. So let's figure out what's happening here, okay? A lot of kids, or enough kids, I should say, get confused here. When I am taking negative one-half and dividing it by negative six, that's the same thing as taking negative one-half and multiplying it by negative one-sixth, okay? A negative times a negative is a positive. One times one is one. Two times six is twelve. So I should end up with plus one-twelfth equals y. That's my inverse right there. It's not 2. It should be 1 12th. So the answer is choice 3. Number 18. The expression x squared plus 12 all over x squared plus 3 can be rewritten as... Okay, this is a division problem. Okay? And I'm going to use division here. I could, if I should choose to, and if you want to try this on your own after, I can put this into y1 in the graphing calculator, and then I can put this into y2, and I could see if they were the same graph. If they were the same graph, then they're the same thing, and they could be rewritten as each other. If they're not, I would cross this out, and then I would try the next one. I would still put my yellow highlight into y1, and I would try to put this into y2. If the graph is the same, then that's your answer. Because they're looking what's equivalent. If one equation can be rewritten another way, they're equals. Okay? So, in the meantime, 
Let's get rid of all this highlighting, even though, Mr. Visca, I love highlighting. I love highlighting here because it draws attention to some writing on the board or typing or font, but it doesn't cross it out, so to speak. You can still see it below. I, I love highlighting. Mm. So let's divide. I think we had a division problem. It was problem number three. So it's the first video of this, uh, of this test that I've put up. Okay, problems one through eight. Problem number three, and we did reverse tabular. So in order to divide, first I need to see if I'm missing any terms. I have an x squared. I have a number without an x, but I don't have anything where I have x to the power of 1. Okay, remember, I should have x squared plus, I should have x to the power of 1 somewhere. I have plus my 12. This has literally no x's. That's a 0. Okay, so those exponents should go down in order here, 2, 1, 0, okay? I don't need to write this. But here's the issue. I don't have the 1 here. If you remember from the previous problem, we need to represent that with a 0. There are 0 x to the 1s. And i got to do the same thing to the denominator. I have an x squared. Oh, I don't have any x to the 1s, so i got to write that I have 0 x to the 1s plus 3 and that doesn't have any x, x to the zeros. Again, we don't have to write that. We just know that. Okay. Now we're going to use reverse tabular. Ooh, ooh. This is what's dividing in. I have 1x squared. I have 0x's. And I have a positive 3. So right now, I know that I have 3 rows. But how many columns, meaning, I mean, am I going to have to put something here? You know, how many of those vertical lines am I going to have to draw? Well, there is an easy way to figure that out. We are going to wrap this around the outside and see how many more corners we need, meaning my x squared needs to output from this corner. My 0 x's has this corner here. My 12 this corner here. Look, we don't need any more. We're going to do reverse tabular with just one column here. It can be done. Don't look at me like that. It's fine. Don't freak out. Now let's go with that. This has to be an x squared, okay, because it outputs an x squared. Well, what do I multiply x squared by so that it stays x squared? 1. So let's multiply everything times 1. 1 times 0x is 0x, and that's good. It matches. 1 times 3 is 3. The remainder. How do we write a remainder? How do we figure out a remainder? I adjust this number here to become this number. How do I do that? Well, if I have 3, I need to add 9 to it to become 12. And that adjustment is my remainder. So if I write my answer out, here's the answer to my division problem up here, the quotient. 1, my remainder, plus 9, always gets written over what I divided in. I mean, I could write this, but I don't need to put the 0x back into the answer. I only need it for the division process. So it was x squared plus 3. And as I'm looking, that's definitely choice 2. Okay, resist the urge. Okay, I can't tell you the number of kids, or students I should say, that will go, oh, these x squareds cancel and 12 divided by 3 is 4. That's why they put the choice 4 there. Quick little uh, reminder about factoring. If anything is connected with a plus or minus, plus plus, plus or minus, it has to match exactly with that plus or minus and the number that it's being added or subtracted to in order to cancel it. If it's by itself with no plus or minus next to it, then you can cancel it individually. Okay? So don't fall for that trick. 19. An angle theta is rotated. Okay, here's our angle theta. Boop. Okay, our angle theta is rotated counterclockwise on the unit circle, which means it's going uh, like this to here. With its terminal side in the second quadrant. Okay, this is quadrant two, the second quadrant. Okay? 
And that's the second quadrant. And it's shown in the diagram below. Now, which value represents the radian measure? Not the degrees, but the radian measure. This is actually a pretty decent problem. Um, I like it, but I'm a math teacher. I probably like a lot more of these problems than you do. Okay, so they need to figure out what is this angle from here to here, okay? But they don't want it in degrees. They want it in radians. All of these below should be radians, okay? If I know anything, let's start with degrees. This is 0 degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 270, and it comes all the way back to 360. Okay, if I had to ballpark this line right here, okay, in the degrees, the angle, I know it should be more than 90 and less than 180. In fact, it's probably a lot closer to 90. I don't know, maybe it's 100. Yep, that's the wrong one. Mm, this one, let's undo that. Let's go here, get the thinner writing. I mean, maybe it's 120 degrees, maybe it's 115 degrees. I don't know, somewhere around there. But again, my choices are not in degrees, they're in radians. So what I need to do is I need to take each one of these radian measures and convert them to degrees, okay? Again, don't automatically pick four and say, oh, look, it's got to be close to there, right? Choice four is the closest. This is in radians. This up here is in degrees. They are not the same. You need to convert the radians, okay, each one of these radians to degrees and see which one's the closest. Okay, the million dollar question is how do we convert, okay, we have radians, we want degrees. So we take whatever value we have, radians, and we multiply it by 180 over pi. So I'm going to do that to all four of those, and I'm going to see which one comes closest to that 115, 120 degrees. Use your calculator. Why wanted you use your calculator? Use your calculator. Did I tell you to use your calculator yet? Okay, so I'm going to put this here, and I am going to make sure I open this up so you can you have a better... Opportunity. Now, I'm going to take each one of these answers, 1, 2, 65.4, and 114.6, and I'm going to multiply them by 180 over pi. Here we go. Da, 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 da. So I'm going to say alpha y equals enter 180 over pi. And I'm going to multiply it times 1 and hit enter. Okay, that's the equivalent of 57 point two, uh, let's call it 57 degrees. So right now, this radian, one, one radian is the same thing as 57 degrees. That is not 57 degrees. It's not one. Let's try two radians. So I'm going to bring my calculator back up, and I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to retype this, and now just multiply it times two. 114.59, it's 114 degrees. That looks like it's going to be our answer right here. Okay, this is going to be the answer. This is what it is in radians, okay, in degrees, which means it's two radians. This is radians. So why is it not 114.6? Remember, if I want it in degrees, I need to take 114.6 and multiply it by pi over 180. So if I do this, go back up here, copy this, and I'm going to do choice four here. This 114.6. Okay, that's radians. That's the same thing as 6,566 degrees. That is not 6,566 degrees. Come on now. This would be... Six, five, six, six degrees. And if I wanted to do this last one, 65.4. I mean, we've done the rest, so let's just do this. And let's come back here and make it 
for. If I want to convert 65.4 radians to degrees, I multiply it by, and that's 3,747 degrees. Now, the red number is the degree equivalent to all the radians listed. And obviously, we wanted something close to here, 115 to 120. And there you go. Number 20, the depth of the water, which we're represented by D of T, in feet on a given day at Thunder Bay, T hours after midnight, is modeled by the equation dT equals 5 sine of pi over 6, uh, T minus 5 plus 7. Which statement about Thunder Bay is false? I got to be honest with you, when I first did this, I kind of was like, oh, trigonometry. I'm not going to say I got excited, but I went through and I, 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 I didn't pay attention to the word false. We want to find out which one is false, which means three of these things are going to be true. So the first one that's true, don't circle it. Okay, three of them should be true. One of them is false. And I'm going to start by graphing this just so we have a visual of it. Okay, so in your calculators, I've already typed this thing in, okay? In your calculators, you'll see I have my equation here. If you want to pause it so you can put yours in now, go right ahead. But now I'm going to graph this. And this might go a little bit higher. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's do something here, okay? My x variable is t, time. We should not have negative time. So I'm not going to be concerned about these negative x's. And it looks like I need to see a little bit higher up in order to see the top of this curve. And I'd like to see one full cycle. So I'm going to extend this out a little bit more right. So I don't want to see any negative x's. I want to see a little bit more positive x's. And I want to go higher a little bit more positive Y's to see the top of this, okay? So let's go to my window. Uh, X is going to start at 0 because I don't want negative time. And let's go to 15 because I want to see one full curve of sine. My Y's, um, it didn't look like I had any negative, any of the red curve and the negative. And let's go up to 15. And let's graph this bad boy. Beautiful. Sine curve, it's so pretty. And now it's done. There we go. This is great. So I'm going to take this out here, put it right. Oh, not, we're not going to highlight it. That, oh, we're not going to go back. Wow, just, things are going crazy. Let's undo the highlight. No, that's weird. I guess I'm going to have to actually erase the highlight instead of undo it. Go back here, move this thing over to the side or below here. Ah, right here. The low tide occurs at 2 a.m. Okay, low tide occurs at 2 a.m. So T is time, okay, and this is the height. The graph. So right here is the low tide, right here, okay, and that happens to be, if I'm not mistaken, Here's one, here's two. That's two hours after midnight. Remember, zero is midnight, so this is 2 a.m. That is true. Okay, the maximum depth of water is 12 feet. Remember, the depth of the water is dt. Okay, this is the same thing as y. So my y value, the maximum depth, so the maximum y value is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Look at that. Twelve. That's also true. Hmm. Hmm. Very good, very good, very good. Now, three, the water depth at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. is nine hours after midnight. So I've got to go to where my time, the x-axis, is nine. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I go all the way up here, they're saying the depth or the y value is approximately 11. So I go 
right around there. And I go part of the way over here. I gotta see the y value here. Yeah, that is approximately 11. That's right below the 12 at 11. I'm gonna say true. If you wanted to, I could also go on the table. When my x is 9, is my y 11 approximately? I can check it that way as well. Let's hit second table. Okay, x is our t, that's our time. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And they said at 9, it's approximately 11. And there you go, it's 11.33. So that is true. So that means the last thing has to be false, and which is our answer. But let me explain it. The difference, okay, the difference in water depth between high tide and low tide is 14 feet. That means the difference, ooh, highlighter. Yeah, I can use purple. Between the high of 12 and the low of 2. You silly highlighter. I love you, but sometimes you don't write. Okay? Is 14. That is not 14. That's a difference of 10. The difference between 12 and 2 is 10, not 14. There you go. Pleasant problem. Okay. Another easy one. I know you're freaking out because you're seeing these A of Ns and A sub N1 and log. It's, it's, it's insanity. But actually, we're just going to do one thing in the calculator, do it again, and do it a third time. A function is defined as A of N equals A of N minus 1 plus log of N plus 1 times, or excuse me, the log base of N plus 1 of n minus 1. It's a lot of n's. But here is the whole key. They give us a of 1. We need to find a of 3. So a of 1 is actually 8. That is going to come in helpful. How come? Because I'm just going to find a of 2, and then I'm going to find a of 3 right after that, because they build on each other. So if I want to find a of 2, okay, and this is the important part that you need to understand to get this problem. If this is a 2, if right now my n is a 2, okay, and I'm going to make that little note right now. Right now at this stage, n is 2, okay, because whatever is here is my n. That means, okay, for the next, I take my n minus 1. Okay, for this A here. So, equals A to the 2 minus 1 plus the log base is N plus 1. So, my remember, my N is still 2. So, this is 2 plus 1 of my N value, which is 2 minus 1. Okay, let me reiterate that for every n value, for every n value, I've got to substitute in the current, and this is my current n value, n is 2 for this one. So that means right here, I need to do 2 minus 1, which I did. Okay, for right here, I need to do 2 plus 1, which I did. And right here, I need to, again, do 2 minus 1, which I did. Okay. Now, let's just make this easier. Let's, let's just actually do these plus 1s and minus 1s. This is going to be a to the 1, because 2 minus 1 is 1, plus log. Okay, oh, 2 plus 1 is just going to be log base 3 of 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, and what is the only thing that I'd have left that's unknown is a of 1. But oh my goodness, they gave us a of 1. That's an 8. 8 plus log base 3 of 1. I'm going to put that right in my calculator. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I, I could probably do it. Because this one right here tells me what the answer is. But let's use our calculator. 8 
plus alpha window. You see choice five says log base. I don't want log. I want log base. If I just did log, it would not allow me to put the number three down here. Three of one. I think my answer should be eight. It is. It's eight. So, bam, calculator's up. So, uh, do, 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 do. there we go. We just got the eight. I apologize. Someone knocked at my door. I had to pause this. Now, okay, eight. My answer was eight. A of two equals eight. Now we got to find A of three. And that's going to give me our answer. So look at, I know this is going to be three minus one because my N is now three. So if I take three minus one, that's going to be A to the two because it's three minus one plus the log of this N is going to be a three. Three plus one will give me the log base four of this n will also be a 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. So now I can plug this in the calculator with one minor little exception. What's a of 2? We just figured it out. It's 8. I'm going to put this in the calculator now and I'm going to see what answer that gives me and that my friends should be the answer you need. It should be up there. All right, so it is 8 plus log base 4 of 2. So I've got 8 plus log base, not log, log base 4 of 2. Is that 8 and a half? 8.5. That's my answer, 8.5. Always goes to that eraser. It's funny. 8.5, which is choice two. There you go. Number 22, which function has a maximum y value of four and a midline of y equals one? Okay, I'm going to cross out two problems or two options right away. This is a maximum of four. The midline isn't one. It looks like it is because this arrow goes on forever. So there really is no midline if it goes down forever. Can't be one. Okay, remember, we need a midline of one, which is right here. This is one. Y equals one. That can't be the midline because this goes up forever. Boom, it's not one or three. So my choices are two or four. Now, midline of one. I was blue. This is your midline. I'm going to put M for midline. One, that's good. This also has a midline of one. So I really need to look at my maximum Y value of four. Okay, how do I find a maximum Y value? Well, I need my midline, which is one for both of them. Okay, and in order to find my min and max, I need to add and subtract my amplitude. My amplitude here is 4. Okay, so I add 4 to get to my max of 5, and I subtract 4 to get to my min of negative 3. This here does not have a max of 4. It has a max of 5. By default, is choice 2. But let's check that, okay? We have my midline of 1, my amplitude is 3, okay? I know it has a negative 3 there. That just means it's flipped vertically. It's like reflected or actually flipped around the midline vertically, okay? It still goes up 3 and down 3. So if I add 3, that will indeed give me a maximum of 4. If I subtract 3, my minimum would be negative 2, okay? There you go. That's the one we wanted. Pretty simple. Ooh, we're going to have to do some foiling. We're going to have to do some multiplying with I's, imaginary number. 23 states, which expression is equivalent to X plus YI times X squared minus XYI minus Y squared? 
where i is an imaginary number. All right, let's do this, okay? I'm going to have to FOIL this together. I need to multiply x times x squared. That gives me x cubed, okay? x times a negative xyi minus x squared yi and x times y squared, negative. So it's negative x y squared. Now I need to multiply yi times these, okay, all three of these, okay? I got to distribute. I call it double distribute. If you want, you can use the box method or the area model. I just like doing it this way, okay? yi times x squared is, and they're, both, they're all positive, so it's positive x squared yi. yi times a negative xyi is x, well, it'll be negative, okay, positive times a ne negative, x y squared i squared, all right? And yi times a negative y squared is negative y cubed i. Here is what you must remember with i. i squared is equal to negative 1. That's a big thing to remember. I have an i squared here. I'm going to change that to negative 1. That's a negative on the outside. I don't know why I put it on outside the parentheses, but it's a negative 1. In fact, I don't like that I did that because it looks like I'm just subtracting 1. We will change this to negative 1 and multiply. Negative 1 times this will become a positive x, y squared. So it takes this place. Let's combine like terms, shall we? Okay, we have x cubed. Ooh, my next terms cancel. I have a negative and a positive version. Bang, bang. Ooh, my next terms after that cancel. I have a negative xy squared and a positive xy squared. And last but not least, minus x cubed i. So, I mean, it's x cubed minus y cubed i. Did I say y cubed i? I hope I did. And the only answer that has that is 4. I love foiling. I love double distributing box method. Uh, it's easy as long as you, you know how to multiply. And remember your exponent rules. Okay, I, I really, really like these types of problems where it changes the unit of time, but I really, really dislike these types of problems because sometimes you've got to do it one way, sometimes you've got to do it another way, depending on, on your answers uh, that are given to you, multiple choice, um, but let's just stick with this problem and do it this way, and I will try to explain this as best I can. Okay? 24. The growth of a $500 investment can be modeled by the function P of T equals 500 times 1.03 raised to T, where T, okay, may I go to highlighter here? T represents time in years, okay? In terms of monthly rate of growth, the value of the investment can be best approximated by, notice that all the exponents are still T's. They are not M's for month. Sometimes they give you M's for month, and you kind of got to be careful with that, but they are still T's, okay? <clears throat> now, here we go. And maybe your teacher can explain this slightly better, but right now time is equal to one year. One year is 12 months, right? One year is 12 months, okay? So if I want my t valuable, my vari variable, valuable, value, it's money, it's growth, I see value, but I meant variable. This is a year, one twelfth of a year represents a month, okay? So what we're going to do 
is the following. We're going to take our 500. Okay, it's 1.03, and my exponent is now 1 12th t. Okay, I'm not done. We're going to come back to this in a moment. Okay, what I need to do in order to get that rate for the month is I need to take the numeric part of the exponent and actually apply it to the 1.03. If you know what the answer is and where we're going, I'm not done yet because there's something that also needs to be added. I will explain it later. Okay? So 500 times, I will put this in my calculator and I will get a value. So let's come down here. Let's take 1.03 and raise it to the 112. 1.03 and raise that to the 1 divided by 12. Okay, so my new decimal, okay, is going to be in that parentheses 1.002466. Let's bring this down here. All right. 1.002, and it looks like, okay, it, it's not these anymore, so it can't be 3 or 4. All right. And 2, 4, 7, they round this 6 to a 7, so it's 2, 4, 7, T. Here's the problem. This is why I don't like these, because they are easily stumbling problems. You can fail easily. Now, this problem, not the test, that's in months right now, right? If my variable was M for months, that's right. But notice they are still in t time. So I don't want this to be one month. I want it to be in a year. Okay? I want it to be in a year. So they use t, but technically it's a month. This is now a month, the t, not a year. So in order to make my month into a year, I got to multiply it times 12 because there are 12 months in a year. That's the exponent, not just the t. I really dislike that they do that to you, but they do it to you. Okay, let me explain that one more time. Okay, if I have 500, now that we went through a 1, so let me explain it again, 1.03. I want it in months, so I'm going to do 1 12th of my year. Now that's months, okay? But since that's months, I still need it to be a year. 12 months is in a year, okay? Look at that. Now I apply this, and that's how I get my 1.00247. Um, another way to think of it is, look what I did to the exponent. I put the 1 12th. And then I put the times 12, right? What happens if I actually multiply 1 12 and the 12 together? They go bye-bye, and I end up with my original equation. So it's equivalent. This is actually equivalent. It just happens to be in months instead of years. Eh, a little tricky, a little underhanded. Don't like what you did there, Mr. Regents, but you did it. Okay, we are done. Don't forget to ring that bell, like, subscribe, please, that would be awesome. And I will see you in the next video when we start the part two, which is the first of the short answers. Bye-bye.